All right, so let's take a look over here at this bean I have growing in the greenhouse. And these are called the red noodle bean, yard bean. It's, it's a yard bean is what it is. Supposed to get three feet long. And they're close to that now as it is. Now, only thing I can say about this bean, and I can't really do a taste test on it because, I mean, here's a smaller one pot. I could probably break that off and eat it, but I could try. But the thing is, is I don't know when you're actually supposed to eat these things. And what happens is, is once the bean gets developed and long, it immediately develops into a hard bean and dries right up. So th within a week, this bean will be pretty much like this one here. And this is dry. It's got beans in it, and you can open it up and take the beans out. And um, you can cook them and eat them that way. But eating them raw, is this isn't one of those kind of beans you could just eat raw. I mean... I mean, there's beans in here right now. So, you, you ain't eating this one raw. I tried eating it raw last year. It wasn't a very good experience, so I won't be eating them raw anymore. But basically, what they do is they come out, they put the stringer out, and then they throw out all these little things. Here's a young one up here. See that? That's a young one. They come out. And they dropped this bean, and it just looks gorgeous. It's a very gorgeous looking bean. Um, trying to look for the leaf on this thing. The leaf is kind of different. Here's the leaf, what the leaf looks like. It's a little different than the regular bean. Here's the leaf of it. And it's a pretty aggressive bean if you grow it in the right conditions. You really got to give it good soil, and you really have to put it in the right area of your yard it's like i've grown this bean in three different areas of my yard so far it did okay out in the garden in the back but i planted it out in the back where it didn't get that much sun didn't do good there and growing it in the greenhouse it seems to have done the best because it's always warm it gets watered on a regular basis and it, it just has plenty of sunlight it's got the best angle of sun i built the greenhouse so you get the best full angle of sun i can get on my property so they're getting full sunlight, and they grow best that way. But they are a very aggressive bean, and they will grow and crowd out pretty much everything else that's growing around it. As you can see with my Romano beans, they literally take over the whole inside of the greenhouse, shading out my tomatoes, which are all starting to die off now, probably partly because this thing is in the middle. And I do grow this in the middle to block some of the sunlight, mainly because the temperatures will just simply get too hot in here. So I need to be able to regulate temperature and growing this beanstalk in here is really the best way to go about doing that. But these beans grow really good in the greenhouse, hot environment, regular water, good soil. That's all you got to do. Nothing special. No, no major tips and tricks with it. But again, it's not like a green bean you can eat green off the vine as they ripen. They just come out like this and then they pretty much, you know, they're done. <laughs> just wait for them to harden, and I don't know. I mean, to me, they're more or less an ornamental bean, though you can cook them and eat them. There's probably nothing wrong with doing that. It's just, I don't know. I'm not growing beans pretty much to cook and eat. I grow beans for the most part to, you know, uh, eat them fresh and raw. That's how I like to eat my beans. So, but like in a case like this with these beans, I just grow them for the ornamental purposes and I also can offer them on my website. Outside of that, I really, you know, I don't really have any major use for them. I've got so many beans, to, other beans to eat, like the Romano beans, when they dry up, they give you a beautiful bean when they're finished and you boil a pot full of those and, you, you know, you got a food for two, three days. I guess you could do the same with this if it produces a lot more. Right now, it's just what you see here. There's a few hanging in and between here a little bit, but it's not a heavy producer. You know, it's not a major, you know, bean producing plant. It will produce a lot if it grows by itself. I mean, it's growing with the Romano beans, so they're competing, I guess. So it, it, this one's not putting out a whole lot of beans, but maybe it will. I mean, we're still got a little life left in August and September's right around the corner within a week or so. So maybe it will 
uh, put out a, another half dozen or a dozen beans. But I, I'm not really that concerned with it. You know, it's just like I say, I just need enough beans to replant next year and then offer whatever is left, you know, overage for uh, from the, for the website. And outside of that, I, it's no – for me, it's no uh, kind of a cash crop, though they do grow well. And, um, you know, that's all I can really say about it. What do they taste like? I did eat them one time. They taste like regular kidney beans, to be honest with you. I mean, it, beans are beans, you know, and especially once you mix them with other food, you can't really isolate any undertones with the flavor to, of the the bean. But, yeah, it's a cool plant. Hopefully it produces some more beans, gives me some more of these pods. I leave those pods on there to dry completely. I let them fully dry out, and uh, at the end of the year, when the plants are all coming down, and I got to take everything down, then I collect all the pods and put them in a the bag, and then I, you know, I isolate them and I store them for next year. So anyway, that's a quick look at the red yard long noodle bean. I'll put the right name in the description. You can look it up online. All right. So like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.